Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Ah, okay. Good. <laughs> Always hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. You have you 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 you're from Mexico. You've moved to Germany. You're about now back in Mexico. So so tell me, who are you? What are you doing? And um, why did you decide to move to Germany? What did you do there? Well, to give a little more more of background of my life, I started uh, in 2011 uh, in Germany. I did an exchange program there in Pforzheim. And I liked so much the experience that eventually when I finished my uh, bachelor degree here in Mexico and I worked a little bit, I wanted to go back to Germany. So I have that dream, I can say, to go back, have again the experience of living abroad. And so I started the search and I found uh, a master program at the Hochschule Heilbronn. So as many other like students, they want to go and to Germany and have all the questions that might arise. Uh, I also lived uh, that process of how to study in Germany and how to study my master in Germany. But that also include uh, how about living, uh, living costs, what type of program should I look for? And since my background was in marketing and administration here in Mexico, I wanted to look something similar. So I studied there in Hochschule Heilbronn, the Master in International Business, and should try to look uh, and expand my all my knowledge and all the expertise and to learn more about it and have the international experience. How was the research going in Mexico? Was that easy? Uh, well, at first, since I already had the experience of living in Germany, I knew already the DAAB. Uh, forget that name, that's the exact yeah. name in German. Uh, but they already have like the uh, big list where you can filter out which type of programs and which are the places that are offering, offering those programs, which universities. So trying to look for the program was not a difficult thing. Uh, it was just like sorting out and finding out and then starting to, to apply or to start looking what the universities are requiring to study Germany. So I could say that was the easy step of the whole process because the complicated thing was to get all of the things or all the requirements that are involved to go and study in Germany. For example, well, uh, university's paperwork, you just have to deal with uh, your previous university and the new university you're applying. But also you have to deal with the visa and with accommodation. And actually, well, the university, in my case, Hochschule Hagron, they have a list of, uh, of some uh, flats and apartments that they have like uh, offers for students, but you have to contact them. And well, for me, I have a little bit of German knowledge, but sometimes you, uh, well, writing German and asking in German, do you have a, a flat free or what are the costs or like, or what it's called in German, the Nebenkosten, or if it's Kalt or Barmite. And there were like many things that if one as first time experience or second time experience of going to Germany was like the struggles of the of the dream of the study dream of in Germany. So uh, I think that saying just like, oh, go to study in Germany sounds really nice, but there's a lot of hard work that probably is not really mentioned. Uh, other thing that also, uh, like a student or, or pretending to be a student and uh, uh, go to a German university uh, is also the visa. And students have to, well, for foreigners, students outside the, the EU, uh, we have to deal with uh, going to the, uh, what's it called, the consulates. In the embassies and to deal other type of paperwork that we have to previously 
prepare ourselves. So as a student, you have to sort out many things and it will be easier, I think, if, I don't know, like having proper knowledge. But once that I already have the knowledge, it's like now it's time for us, I think, for, to start sharing this knowledge that students will face so much problems or issues while trying to find accommodations, while trying to do it with uh, legal things with, uh, for example, in Germany with the rat house, what to do when you get in a ride to Germany or where to go. And there are like many things that uh, as a student, you start to deal with. Okay. So it's only for you, Mexican? Or would you describe it as a, as a general issue uh, which you have heard from your um, co-students as well? I think, well, I will go like more in a specific case. Uh, uh, me as Mexicans and then also another uh, uh, co-classmates who were from Mexico first, we have an issue with a blocked account in Germany. Because in 2016, I think that we were the first generation that uh, uh, German law uh, asked foreigners to have a blocked account. And so that we can show that we have the, our income, then we can live by ourselves in Germany. Sure. So for us, it was a new thing and also for the universities. So dealing for me, when I went to the embassy in... So you went to the embassy in, the embassy in Mexico? Yeah, I went to the embassy in Mexico. I got everything prepared. I have, uh, I suffered it by, because uh, uh, the university acceptance letter was kind of a little bit later than expected. So I have like very short times to apply for the visa okay. because the visa times uh, last like three weeks. Okay. So okay. Yeah, yeah, so I had to do a fast uh, paperwork thing, and then I just went to Mexico City. I went to the embassy the, the day that I had my appointment. Like, you need to have an appointment. So they were like kind of frustrating, like not having all the paperwork. Now that you have the paperwork, I went to the embassy, and then they told me, you need a block account. I'm like, how do I get a block account? And well, you can just send your paperwork to a uh, German bank and then they will do all the, all the opening of the accounts. Did that work? And that was more stressful in my time because I had to send the documents uh, to Germany. So from Mexico to Germany and all original documents. So that will take probably one or two weeks. It took me one or two weeks and classes in Hebron were starting. So I was like contacting the university, told them, hey, this happened. They asked uh, to get a visa in the block account and the process might uh, be, have a delay. So they were like, okay, we will wait for you. Um, and so I just were like waiting. I got the uh, opening of the bank account. And then I just immediately sent the documents to the embassy, and then they told me, don't worry. In two, three more days, they just send me back the notice that I can uh, pick up my visa. But the whole process was kind of stressful, uh, waiting, not knowing if I was going to get accepted or the uh, account was going to be open. And I know that other classmates eventually had the same problem. And even some were, were rejected, so they have to wait. One, yeah, they have to wait one more year to apply again and do the whole process. So I felt kind of very lucky that I, my my process was flowing, but that just like just in time. Yeah. And but also I was I cannot I couldn't got a, a flat uh, at that moment because I didn't have a visa. And they were asking me for the proper document to. <laughs> so I was like, I just contacted one flat there in Cadron and told them, I don't know when I'm arriving. Uh, can you just please save me one spot? I'm a foreigner, visa, but I want to live at your place. Please help me. And they were like, 
fuck you. <laughs> exactly. So like, how do you prove? And then you're not you're not going to be assured that you will get the visa. So even if a flat ask ask, okay, I will save you the spots, but send me the the caution. So send me the, that, the, the especially especially in 2016, right? 2015 yeah. refugee crisis. And exactly, it was on the Jeff refugee crisis. So uh, also, like I don't know the amount of available flats, uh, especially for foreigners, there were also in Hebron until the, just like the one recent year, they're opening more flats for students. But yeah. in 2016, there were like not that much. So luckily, they told me, "Okay, we will see what we can do." They waited for me, and then. As soon as I got the, the bank account, I sent a transfer uh, to, uh, to the department so that I can pay the first caution. And, and then I told them, okay, I'm just gonna try to book my flight. So luckily I, I, here in Mexico, there was some service that you can change your uh, flights. So that was kind of a, a safe for me and uh, also the bank account. I arrived at him of birthday. It was kind of my gift for that year. What would you say, what like, would you say? to repeat it again, or what, if, you, if someone asks you um, about your experience, about um, what you recommend, what, what, what are you like three tips would you have? Three tips for students who are trying to go to Germany. Yes. Okay. Well, because not knowing anyone there in Germany makes things or tough. You, that your only contact is the university, and sometimes university doesn't have the time to help, like the 30, 40, 50 new international students that are arriving, or probably more, it depends on the university. So I recommend like to go to Facebook groups or to go and try to search for people who are already experienced going uh, going to Germany or or here in this case of Albro, uh, because there are people who are already experienced and who have this tough way of going to back to Germany. Sure. For example, sure. for flats, just going and ask, hey, if someone knows a place to go. I think. Trying to first to, to look for some people who can help will be uh, really easy or can make it really easy the first uh, arrival in Germany. Because also when you go to Germany, you go out there alone, if you're a foreign, at least, or unless you have already friends or family there or relatives that you already know. But if you're going for the first time, trying to have some uh, trustful contact, it's one key, and it can be, I think it can be found by proper uh, Facebook groups or any other social media. Okay. Okay, that, that could be one of the first tips. Um, and then another tip I can try to say is like, now that many, there are many like digital banking offers, uh, I think there are like now uh, some companies or services that are helping uh, with this type of legal issues or the, or the visa issues. So try to look for some help to avoid these kind of struggles that I had uh, because you can do many things by your own or, but you need time. You need time to open black accounts and sometimes you need to wait for the acceptance letter of the university. So try to do things more on time and try to look for services that are are already helping. Uh, that can be also a second tip for international students. And I don't know, for third tip, um, also there are like, well, more on the part of the flats and the, um, finding an apartment. Uh, try to look also for, well, the universities have their lists, but there are like more many online websites that are trustful. And then you can start dealing, but sometimes it's uh, having that contact. Uh, they add, they sometimes already ask people that are really living there in the country. So it's very like to, to find also again, uh, 
in the university, people who might know already from, from some other places and to see who is also already willing to help with the flat. So I think that's the most problem on that kind of talking about services. I mean, there was just, you haven't started studying yet, you haven't lived in Germany yet, it was just the, the, the issues with the visa and, and, and coming to Germany and getting accepted. So how was, how was studying and living in Germany in Heilbronn as a forerunner? Okay, so now living and coming there, was, I didn't have any family there yet, I will say, uh, because uh, the good thing of going and studying to Germany is that you already know what are you going to do. You're going to meet people there at the university. You're not going there by yourself to a new place that you don't know. You already have like an easier path to go to a foreigner country or where you will be a foreign. For me, like going to Heilbronn it was like making new friends and making new classmates that turn out to be now friends and then also getting to know teachers and who come to eventually were guides of, of when I was like looking for jobs or in the thesis time, for example. And living in Hadron for me was like starting to build up a community that eventually were one that wants to help me to live by myself along with my family and when I was in troubles or in problems or when we went to the party and kept building up a community was the main key of having a very good and successful time there at, at Hagron. And I think that's the thing that I still uh, keep the community. And I think uh, in Hagron University and many of the international community, Hagron make it easier to live there. Um, and for any other other city or probably I don't know if there are like this type of community, but now knowing that in Hadron there's a really a supportive community, studying, living, partying, and even working eventually after you finish your studies, uh, it makes it really easy to to be around surrounded by a supportive community. Okay. You had had you had contact to to mostly foreigners due to um your master was really a lot of foreigners there, right? Or were you also in common with, with Germans as well and uh, were able to practice in German? And now like uh, what is called living with Germans in Germany, because also the language barrier is a deal. <laughs> and you learn it. You learn it by going to the supermarket, uh, going to restaurants, and then you start with the uh, easy German, let's say. You're listening and you're talking, you're ordering. And then you also have some, if you have classmates that are German, then you start the, talking with them. But sometimes since they know that you're the foreigners, they switch to English to have like a more fluid conversation. Mm -hmm. But sometimes then you, you ask like, okay, let's try to talk in German and you're going slow. And then, the conversation doesn't flow as easy or they don't understand you. Yes. But uh, Germans, they help you. They understand you because they already know or probably, uh, and then probably some Germans, they recognize themselves when they're talking English, that they are not really fluent or what to talk, but they have really good English and, and probably better than my German or what. But it was like a, it's creating a relationship with Germans and Germans help you. And sometimes they, they, if you don't have like the close contact or you don't see them, they're there. And when you need the help, there's like some people that will help you, some Germans that will help you and make your, uh, your stay there, like Hagron or in general in German, uh, to make it easier to adapt to the German culture. Okay. And I found that what I could say that warm, uh, like a warm uh, community or supportive German community. Because also not only in my uh, studies, I just found like a, a community, supportive community, also like working community. And when I, I, I was working also uh, 
on sports on students first when i was studying my master uh which was my boss and all that uh teammate uh were also they knew that my german was not really good enough but they were slow on me and they gave me the opportunity to keep working with them and you're listening german every time now you're learning work uh, german for work or more like terms uh, that probably at the university they don't teach you uh, or at basic german classes they don't teach you but you're listening and that part of probably not talking that much but listening helps you and you're like uh, learning german as well and you're also creating that relationship with german well not just that you studied you also work during the studies right and after that you went to to Bechtle and worked there full time how was that not just finding a job but also working in germany because from my experience i've heard of a lot of foreigners they said okay, finding a job is pretty tough yes um well finding a job like working student what options do you you have because you have more limited uh, time and also some companies are not offering, offering some flexible schedule or they do but uh, you are not like qualified for those those kind of uh, working student positions so probably as many other many students i just like start looking at job listings and try to look for something that is more to relatable to my background uh, or you just apply like to mini jobs start earning some more uh some more income that can help you like to start living there or kind of more to cover your other expenses so there are other types of jobs mini jobs or very student jobs and one as a foreigner you have uh, permission of working uh, around 20 hours per week and you well that's what your visa says so you just have to stick to that, that rule and and it's a matter of going to job listings going either to also Facebook groups about jobs or just going if you are looking for a more a, a more small job like in restaurants or uh, retail store, you just go there, you send an email or talk with the owner, and then you just kind of negotiate it. They give you some hours so that you can have some extra income. But luckily for me, I found just one job position that was uh, what was called an ARP, a subsidiary from Beckley. They were looking uh, for a student, working student position in digital marketing. Digital marketing has been one of my side careers and yeah, yeah so I sent a cover letter, I received the email, Carlos, we want to have a talk with you, I got the interview and also on the cover letter I was also really lucky because I also specified that my German level was regular, but it was fine for them, I had my interview, uh, luckily for me, my boss asked me, like, do you want it in German or in English, the, the interview? So I was like, okay, English. And well, they like my profile and they, after we have that. Okay, so I had my interview there. Eventually they liked my profile and they got back to me. And then they just sent the email, Carlos, we like your profile. Uh, if you want to start working, the 1st of March of, of 2017. Uh, was my first official date at one of the group of Beckley. And I started there. My experience now was working, studying, and living in Germany uh, as a student. So it was a mix. And thanks to the Hochschule Kalbron, that they have a very flexible uh, schedule on the second semester, I was able to study one full day, work the, the second day, study the next day, and then work the full day. Uh, okay. and it was really easy thanks to the schedules and the flexible schedules also at uh, ARP that I could uh, start working and starting managing and eventually probably this is also interesting for students that they could have kind of a semester break where they can also search for internships or any other uh, better student positions and they can work more time 
so they can earn more, earn more. And they can also use that time for earning more experience or they can eventually, what I did was to mix my thesis time with my working time. And I was like working on both things, the thesis and the, and the, and the work at the AR. Did you live there actually? Did you have it? Or you lived in the shared flat? Uh, the first year, uh, I lived on a, on a first uh, shared flat, the one that I uh, contacted at the first time. Okay. For the second year, I wanted to look for something cheaper because I, wa I was uh, paying for the laundry and I was looking at this for something cheaper or not paying laundry. Uh, because that's another issue that students might have paying for laundry if you have, or if you go like to this uh, sort, sort of uh, complex uh, or student complexes. And eventually I found another place, but it was kind of hard because the offer of Apartments, there's not that much in Hybron. So <laughs> it was like, Corona, it's all empty. <laughs> and yeah, what I'm talking of, that was on maybe 2017, by the end of 17. But thanks to Andor, who was a good uh, man who also taught Spanish, so it was really helpful at the beginning. Uh, so I just moved. But moving also meant that I eventually have to send uh, uh, to the room funk. I don't know if that's the name. Um, that the notice that I'm living in another place, and I also have to send again the notice to the rat house that I'm moving and that I have a new place to live. Uh, luckily, those places are uh, for internet. Uh, they already have internet, so I didn't have to worry that much about hiring a new um, internet service. But those are things that uh, when you move, uh, one has to consider. And also uh, if, it's, if it has furniture or not. Yeah. So the good thing, I already had the mattress that I bring, brought from my old place to that new place. And, but basically it was a new place already for me. So that was one of the other things that I had to deal when I decided to move. Luckily, the new place had a laundry place, uh, a laundry machine. So they were like starting to get more easier things as you keep learning or knowing how yeah. to live in Germany. Who taught you about Rundfunk? I don't think it's a it's a concept that as as a foreigner you understand immediately. Uh, well, I learned about the, this. Uh, I don't know fee or how how can I call it that uh, people in Germany has to pay for the services of uh, television, how I, yeah. how I uh, but this, I learned it like from my first experience, but, um, but usually people who go for the first time, they don't know they have to pay uh, uh, this so-called like uh, broadcasting fee, or I don't know how to call it in English. Yeah. And eventually, if you, if you don't report to this uh, service, where are you living? Or if it's getting paid by your uh, landlord or the place where are you living, then you might receive like the amounts of months that you didn't pay the service since you're registered. <laughs> then you will get like this notice that you have to pay, I don't know, just for saying number like 50 euros for the last uh, three, six months. Um, I think it's 17 per month. Uh, yeah, it's 18 years uh, around about 70, 50 or something and then it adds up every month. Yeah, but nobody tells you, you just receive it. You just hear like, yes. what do I have to pay and why? And that, I think that's one very big issue, like especially for international. But you moved into a shared flat, right? Yeah. So right. Since, I, since I moved to a shared flat, but my landlord was already paying this uh, this fee. Yeah. So I think he was already covering on my rent. So I just have to send uh, the number of contract of my landlord and, and stating that he's paying for the whole house or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't have to worry about much about that and also about 
uh, entered. So, but you had to worry about like health insurance and taxes and stuff like that. Yeah, and then eventually I also that's another term because now that I was starting to work and earning uh, some income, it was the next <laughs> question. The the next question was like, what should I do? Like, how's in, uh, taxes here in Germany, and what should I do? And well, I still didn't figure it out that much. But I used some services, online services that handle out uh, after a few work one year. Uh, they help you uh, to report those income and also the taxes so that you can have that tax return. And I think for students, there is uh, there is this it's such big thing of tax return because uh, you can uh, uh, report also expenses, expenses also from moving to one place to the other, uh, if you buy a laptop or something for your studies, and then you eventually can get also some uh, of those taxes back. But actually there's like only some uh, places at the university sometimes, but actually you don't, they don't tell you that much. Or one as a foreign student, those are things that you're like, I, I don't think that students think, oh, the taxes here in Germany. Yeah. Uh, you eventually learn about those things. And, and also with the insurance, like for the first time that you go to, to Germany, it's like, okay, I have just the international insurance that will make it up. But uh, until you go to the rat house and then they tell you, okay, where is your German insurance? They're like, okay, I have my international insurances. And it's like, no, you need a German insurance. And they're like, okay, which one? And then you're like dealing also with those questions. Uh, I don't know which one is good or how does insurance work here in Germany or even like going with a doctor. And well, since saying back again that I had the experience of uh, fourth time, well, I just went to like, for example, AOK -OK, and because it was like the most known, but there are many other services that are more cheap, that are cheaper and, or there are, I think they have like easier, better services. But for me, AOK -OK was like an easy going thing and I don't want to worry. So I just went there and they're the ones dealing with my insurance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you reflect on it? How long have you been living in Germany? Three years then? Uh, so I lived there uh, for four years. Four years? For three and a half years uh, until Corona crisis and personal crisis and coming up here back to Mexico. Uh, and, but I can say that living there in Germany was one of the most wonderful experience. I hopefully after more things have settled down in these times and well, I will see at least how to go to visit. And, but yeah, studying in Germany, it's, uh, I can say a life changing decision. You can always do a second master. Sorry? You can always do a second master, I said. No, I, I already have a second master. Hybron was my second master. Oh, you have a second master already. <laughs> Three is too many. Three is yeah. too many. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so more or less that in a summary, that has been my experience there in yeah. Germany. Very similar experience, especially if you're a foreigner and you come to another country and it's all new and you don't speak the language properly. It's basically poof, right? And especially, I remember my my, my time in, in, in Russia. And I was an exchange student in Russia and nobody spoke English. <laughs> that was fucked up. And yeah, I that's... little, little, little Russian, right? And it was like, yeah. I, I sat in the principal's office and everyone talked. It was like, I don't understand it. Yeah, I felt pretty lost. I can imagine, like, if you're surrounded by internationals, you get a feeling really quick, and you get into it really quick, and you, you can stomach everything. If you have no one to talk to, it's rather tough. It can be rather tough. Yeah, and I can imagine, like, well, reading Cyrillic, if you don't read Cyrillic or know the basics of Russian. <laughs> so when going to Germany, that's a good thing. Like, there's, you still have this for the Western countries, Kind of a more similar type of culture, but if you start to go to Eastern countries or even like 
uh, we're going very, very, very far, like in Middle East or East Asian countries. So that's a good thing that in Germany, I saw in Germany that it has, it is kind of a meet point of the world when you can uh, exchange and have more this cultural exchange uh, with people from all around the world and actually also in Heilbronn. And I think it's one of them, Germany, one of the cities with most uh, different types of internationals from different countries. And that's also that, well, it's for the people who likes uh, learning about cultures and dealing and talking and learning from different cultures, uh, I think also that's a really good experience. Yeah, thank you. Hello, thank you very much for your insights. It's already been, I don't know, close to 40 minutes that you yeah. described um, how you, not just how, how your time in Germany was, but everything from the beginning, how you applied for your visa, which was troublesome, coming to Germany, studying in Germany and working there, what experience you made. So thank you very much, a lot.